Europe is going through an energy crisis. Gas prices are up here in America too, but nothing like what's happening over there. Every day the European TTF benchmark makes a new high. It doesn't look as if it's going to improve anytime soon either. Electricity prices a year out are nearly as high as spot prices. To put it in perspective, Europeans are paying seven or eight times the US benchmark for natural gas. Their electricity prices are 10 times higher and sometimes more. It's the result of two related bad policies. One was Western Europe's heavy reliance on Russia for natural gas. German policymakers, led for years by Angela Merkel, believed that engaging with Russia via trade was the best way to turn a former enemy into a reliable business partner. It looks like an especially dumb strategy now. Trump was dead right when he asked why the US had troops stationed in Germany to protect them from Russia, while Germany bought increasing amounts of its energy from this potential adversary. If you're interested in learning more about the energy sector and interest rates, then don't forget to subscribe and follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter. Our handles are in the description box below. Related to this dependence on Russia, Europeans reduced their own production of natural gas. They were planning to phase out fossil fuels. The European Union is the world's leader in reducing CO2 emissions. Germany especially has invested hundreds of billions of euros on developing wind power. They made themselves further dependent on Russia by phasing out nuclear power. Policymakers there really are set on running the whole country on solar panels and windmills. Thanks to years of poor policy, consumers all across Europe are facing a probable recession. It's hard for an export-driven manufacturing economy like Germany to prosper when energy prices have jumped by a factor of 7 to 10 in less than two years. Germany gets over 40% of its electricity from renewables and has a goal of reaching 80% by 2030. But there's more to energy than electricity. Transportation is mostly about oil and industry uses large quantities of both oil and gas. Of Germany's total primary energy consumption, renewables are 18%. That's about the same as coal, a third less than natural gas, and less than 60% of what they get from oil. Clearly, Germany's big push into renewables isn't doing anything to help with the high prices they're facing today. The price of windmills and solar panels hasn't shot up along with natural gas. And while they've been successful in lowering emissions, China has meanwhile been more than filling the gap. I think it's worth trying to lower greenhouse gases, but it only works if the world's biggest countries are moving together. As long as China and India are pumping out more CO2, they're offsetting any efforts that Western nations are making. We shouldn't be making sacrifices to cut emissions while China is still growing. Reducing emissions means paying more for energy, if we're going to do it, we need everyone moving together. Instead, too many Western countries are giving China a free ride, incurring the costs of trying to get reduced emissions while watching them go up anyway. Our negotiators at these UN conferences are too weak. If you're not willing to walk away from a bad deal, then that's what you'll probably get. There are two takeaways from Europe's energy crisis. One is let's not let America pursue the same policies as the EU. Otherwise, we'll run the risk that our energy prices will look more like theirs. The second is that Europe is now a much more eager buyer of American natural gas. America is a much more reliable supplier, something that should have been clear all along, which, was, which has belatedly been acknowledged now that Russia's true intentions have become clear. Europe's energy crisis is a warning and an opportunity. America's energy sector is well positioned to benefit from the predicament Europe has created for itself. We manage investment products to profit from the outcomes I've discussed. To find out more about what we're thinking, sign up for our twice-weekly blog at sl-advisors.com. We always love to hear from you, so if you have any comments or blog ideas, please leave them down below. I'm Simon Lack. Thank you for watching this video.